Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Joseph from ScreenBite and welcome to my full review of the Razer Lancehead Tournament Edition. So as I mentioned on Twitter, this mouse has been a very polarizing experience for me. There are things that I love, but there are also things that I just can't stand, or at least I couldn't at first. To be completely honest up front, on the first day I really disliked using this thing. It negatively affected my aim and the shape just felt super strange. Now getting into that shape, this mouse has an ambidextrous design, which means it can be used by both left and right handed users. I really wanted to give another mouse like this a try after falling in love so much with the Nexius Rebel. However, the lance head shape is very different. Yes, the angles are the same on both sides, but the back end flares out in a way I'm guessing to help with thumb placement, but that also means that it flares out on the ring finger pinky side, the results of which can cause some really weird hand placement when attempting to grip it, and that is what really made me dislike this mouse at first. Now I would say that this is a medium sized mouse which means it can be best for claw or fingertip grip users. It can also be palmed but it gets very uncomfortable with that shape. My hands measure in by 19.5 centimeters in length by 8 centimeters in width so more or less a medium to large hand and the dimensions of the lance head are 11.7 centimeters in length by 7.1 centimeters in width by 3.8 centimeters in height. So I would say more or less for my hand size, this would be the perfect size, not too large and not too small. With shape and size out of the way, let's talk about design. Overall, I really like it. It has a plastic top, which so far has been good at showing sweat. Also, does not feel cheap at all. Good plastic was definitely used here. Uh, the sides are a nice rubber with lined indents in them, which I feel like really helps with the overall grip. Uh, they did sneak in some glossy plastic here, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, but I can live with it. Um, it just really feels good in the hand. And what has to be one of my favorite features of this mouse is Razer's new implementation of their chroma lighting. It has those LED strips along the sides as well as in the scroll wheel and in the Razer logo. And it just reminds me of the Mamba Tournament Edition, which I love the lighting on that mouse. However, with all that fancy lighting, as well as just the overall nice build quality of the mouse, it does come with one drawback which I feel will deter a lot of people from buying it, and that is the weight. Uh, this mouse weighs in at 104 grams, uh, which is far away from that 85 gram sweet spot of most tournament play. Uh, it's a bit of a heavy mouse, took a little bit of getting used to, but overall I really don't mind it too too much. Now let's have a listen to those clicks. On the bottom of the mouse, you'll find some nicely sized Teflon feet, as well as a profile switch button, which is really nice because for the first time ever, you can actually use this mouse without Synapse installed on your computer, and you can use that button to swap between specific profiles that you have saved to the mouse. As well as you have Razer's 5G sensor, which if you saw my Death Adder review, reminds me a lot of the Pixar 3360. Now to talk about sensor performance, I pulled up a game of Free For All Deathmatch in Overwatch, which is a game that I've been getting way back into again. Uh, now this is an optical sensor, which is great, and I think it's the same sensor that they put in the Death Adder Elite. So it's a 5G sensor, which I believe is their version of the 3360. Uh, from what I can tell, Razer doesn't like to share the exact sensor specs that they're putting in their mice. Um, but it feels really good. Uh, one to one ratio, so everything you do with the mouse is what's exactly what's happening in game. Uh, once again, no angle snapping or acceleration to find. Uh, you can turn that on in settings, but me personally, I never recommend doing it. Um, I like to play on a DPI of 800, which it just feels really good because it's a nice low sense movement. Um, and with that low sense movement, um, there's no like sensor jittering or anything moving around where it shouldn't be moving around. So if you're buying a mouse per performance, uh, this is definitely one for you. 
Now, if you remember way back when, if you were a part of my channel, I reviewed the Razer Mamba Tournament Edition, um, and I loved that mouse. It felt really good in the hand, the lighting was great, um, but it used a very, very crappy laser sensor, uh, which really held that mouse back if you wanted to do anything competitive past casual gaming. Um, this is basically that mouse, but with an optical sensor in it, and I love it for it. Now, the Razer Lance Head Tournament Edition can be used both in Synapse 2.0 and it's, I believe, the first product that come out that uses the new Synapse 3.0 beta. Uh, now, Synapse 3.0 is still in beta, but I gotta say, so far from what I've seen, I'm definitely really liking it. Uh, I'll be the first person to tell you that I absolutely despise Synapse. Uh, on my old computer, I would constantly be running problems where the it just wouldn't open or it would crash my computer or my mouse would stop working. And the moment I delete Synapse off my computer, all those issues would stop. However, uh, with my new Ryzen build, uh, I've had very little issues with uh, Synapse. And that's actually why I'm giving the Landsat a, ch a chance because... I'm of the mindset now where I just want to have as little software as possible on my computer. So if I can have my keyboard and mouse operating out of one, that's great. Um, but I'm rambling. Getting into the software itself, uh, as you can see, it has a newer look, uh, very clean. If you want to get into the Razer Lance head itself, you just click on the Razer Lance head. It'll tell you what you have mapped to for each of the buttons. Uh, you can also switch between left-handed and right-handed here. Uh, under performance, it's basically mirroring what you would see in Synapse 2.0, just with a little bit of a different look. Uh, you can change your sensitivity stages. As you can see, I have 4, 400, 600, 800, 1200, and these go up in steps of, well, actually, it looks like you can actually put whatever you want. I thought it was in 50. That's cool. Uh, so, well, actually, hold on. Let me test that. <clears throat> one, two, five, one. Okay, so it's steps of 100. All right, cool. But yeah, uh, you can view the sensitivity stages here. Um, what that'll do is if you go ahead and click here, you can see on the this is the buttons on the mouse. It'll change the stages for you. I don't know what enable X and Y is, so I just don't click on it. Uh, I keep my polling rate to 1,000. Um, acceleration, why is that on? Put that back down to zero. And boom. Uh, under lighting, uh, you can choose dim, normal, or bright lighting. I keep it bright because RGB, baby. Uh, you can switch off the lighting, uh, which once again, why would you purchase this mouse and want to turn the lighting off? Uh, you have different chroma effects, um, and this is where things change a little bit, but I'll get to that in just a second. Um, under calibration, you can actually calibrate it to the mouse surface that you're using. I've never been a huge fan of these things because I personally don't really see a difference, and you can also change your lift off distance here. All right, back to lighting. So you can go to Chroma Studio, and this is where you can come up with tons and tons and tons of different lighting effects. Uh, the way I have it set up now is that color wave that you see where it's pink and sliding in blue, like a nice little pulsating effect because I'm currently going through this uh, Hotline Miami color spectrum thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you have different breathing effects as you can add. You can do breathing, fire, reactive, ripple, spectrum cycling, starlight, static, and wave. Uh, when you click on an effect, you can then drag and drop or pick specific stuff that you want to edit. So you would drag, or if you want the logo, you would drag. And then you can change each individual color as well as mess with the effect. So for example, if I go into wave, uh, as you can see, this side changes. Uh, as you can see, I have these set to the main color as pink, and then it has the effect of the blue rippling through it. So if I were to click on it, you'll see this change. Uh, you drop it down, and you can choose between different waves as well as the specific colors that you want to choose. And you can choose the angle that is going to come in on just tons and tons of different customizable effects. If there's something that Razer definitely does right, it's their uh, chroma. Um, but pretty much other than that, there's not a whole much left to the software. I believe to get back, you just hit the back button. Nice. And yeah, that's the new Razer Synapse 3.0 software.
All right, so final thoughts. What do I think of the Razor Lancehead Tournament Edition? So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, this mouse has been very polarizing for me. Uh, on one hand, I absolutely love it, and on another hand, when I first got it, I absolutely hated it, and I'm still getting used to it now. I think I'm gonna hold on to it because I'm slowly, slowly starting to like it more and more, um, but for the reasons that I didn't like it, number one was that shape. Uh, I really wish that Razer would just maybe in their next implementation, slim down those flares, because yes, it's really nice on the hand with the, that you're using with the thumb, but it just makes for really weird gripping with your pinky and ring finger. Um, as for the weight as well, it's a little bit too heavy. Um, light mice are really, really good because there's less fatigue as well as you can flick your wrist a lot faster and get those shots that you normally wouldn't be able to get with heavier mice. Uh, now, I will say this, the weight for me personally is not too, too bad. Um, whenever I'm using it, I find that I'm able still, still able to aim. I'm still able to quickly move my wrist, so it's not hindering me too much, but for some, it definitely could. Um, I really, really love the lighting. Uh, then again, I'm just a very simple guy and I love me some RGB, but it just overall is a really good mouse. After watching this review, if you're interested in picking one up for yourself, I got mine on Amazon. Um, I believe it goes for about $80. I had a gift card, so I put a little bit towards it. Um, but yeah, $80, it's a little bit expensive. Um, a little bit expensive. It's very, very expensive. And for a lot of people, um, with the drawbacks, it's not going to be worth that price. Uh, but for me, for the most part, it hits everything that I want it to hit. So that's why I think I am going to go ahead and hold on to it. Uh, I got mine, like I said, from Amazon, but I'm pretty sure you can pick this mouse up pretty much everywhere. Um, but yeah, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video, guys. So thank you once again for watching. As always, if you liked it, make sure to show it by hitting that like button down below. And if you have any questions about the mouse or just anything in general, feel free to ask me in a comment down below as well. Also, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, feel free to subscribe. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.